What's up, Rage and Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yoon. You're watching Rage and Rona Review. I got a top 10 list for you guys. Now that Wonder Woman 1984 is out, I can finally give you my ranking of the 10 films from Warner Brothers' Worlds of DC. I don't want to call it the DC Extended Universe anymore because these films aren't necessarily connected with each other. These are simply films, 10 films as a matter of fact, that are in the DC Universe that came out after Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight Trilogy. So these are a post-Dark Knight Trilogy DC films and now there are 10 of them. So I can finally rank them. So let's just jump right into it. We're going to start off with number 10, Birds of Prey. Now when I first watched this in the theater, I enjoyed it. The more I watched it, the less I was into it. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the character or the... the like I, I noticed more and more things that I consider flaws about this film when I watched it more and more and more. And that is, I really did not like the acting from the actress that played Cassandra Kane. Like, I just find it so weak and unbelievable. And I also feel that the action's just a little bit over choreographed. Like, it feels too choreographed. It feels very, very dance-like. Uh, it doesn't feel violent or visceral at all. It, <laughs> it just feels like, okay, like... Uh, they're just acting out a, um, a sequence and it just doesn't feel as as raw and violent. So um, I just noticed that the more I watched it. So the more I noticed that, the more, the, I mean, the less believable it becomes and the less I feel engaged with the film. So that's number 10. Number nine, Wonder Woman 1984. Still a good film. Not really my cup of tea. I acknowledged what Patty Jenkins is trying to do and she successfully achieved that but it definitely did my, not meet my expectations, especially when Wonder Woman, the very first film, was so good. Number eight, Suicide Squad. Now, this is considered a pretty bad film, but it was at least entertaining, and I did like the characters. I think Will Smith as Deadshot and Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn really stole the show. The only thing I really didn't like about it was the tone was all over the place and also the antagonist element of the Enchantress was just a really bad idea. It should have been the Joker. It really should have been the Joker. I'm excited to see the air cut from David Ayer. Hopefully that actually happens. I really want to see more of Joker. I think he should have been the main antagonist element. That would have been so much better. Number seven, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. Um, this film, man, I, I, <laughs> I had a lot of expectations for this film. You know, the, the big thing that was a big, um, I guess, seller for this film was that the fight between Batman and Superman. And it was just the, you know, it was a little bit underwhelming. And then you had the Martha thing. <laughs> and then Lex Luthor played by Mark Zuckerberg. Like, it just or Jesse Eisenberg, it just felt like, it, like, um, like, uh, like, I didn't know what it was trying to do. Was it trying to be funny? Was it trying to be serious? Like, if they, it was trying to be serious, I had a hard time finding it being serious. Like, where was it going with this? this yeah. <laughs> Number six, Justice League. I'm talking about the Joss Whedon's directed, uh, uh, Justice League. You know what? That was actually fun. Like, it was a fun movie. I was surprised at how much I liked it. I, it's full of flaws. It's, um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's not really that good, but I just think the lightheartedness in it, like the, the humor, really had made it a lot more enjoyable. And I liked it a lot more than Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice was just such a dark movie. But, uh, Justice League... You know, okay, Dawn of Justice has its moments, right? But Justice League, you know, there's a lot of things that I like. I think the fact that I saw everybody come together was a pretty big thing. It was like a fanboy moment to see everybody come together, everybody work together, all those characters that we know and love and, you know, seeing the development of them, uh, you know, they, they have some pretty, like, great moments, when, especially when they're, they're seen together. And seeing Bruce Wayne, you know, bring them all together is really, really cool. Right? So it does have some great moments. Number five, now we're in the top five, Shazam. Shazam, I think, you know, it's it's um it's definitely the, the most disconnected one of all of them because the tone is just like like family friendly, fun, hilarious comedy, right? It's a very different type of film. It's about you know this kid who when she he says the name of the character, he becomes it, right? So there's a lot of like 
fish out of water elements and you know it, it's a high school comedy you know essentially it's a high school comedy so it's so different from you know superman batman wonder woman's very different from that but i still liked it it's highly enjoyable it's very very entertaining and the humor like contributes to a lot of that number four man of steel um, I was a little bit mixed on this when I watched it the first time, but the more I watched it, the more I liked it. And I like, it's so many different things. Like I love the flight scene, the scene where he's flying for the first time. He learns to fly. That was my favorite scene in the entire movie. I liked Han. I loved Hans Zimmer scoring it. I love that this film is so full of action. I love the, the, the crazy Superman style action in this movie where they're like throwing each other through walls. It just gets mind numbing at the end where at the point I was just thinking to myself, how long are they going to do this for where they're just going to just be breaking things? How much longer are they going to break things for? Just breaking everything around them that there's nothing left to break. All the buildings have been completely leveled and the last thing he does is just choke him out and then he's dead. <laughs> so that's that. Here's the top three. Now these films are ones that I really loved. Like I really love these films. Wonder Woman. Oh, so good. I just feel like Ares as a villain was a little bit weak. But besides that, I really enjoyed this film a lot. Okay, I was hoping Wonder Woman 2 or 1984 was going to be better than this one. Okay, but Wonder Woman still stands as the best one between the two. Second, number two, Joker. Wow, this film is like, like, it's flawless to me. It is so good. It is like a masterpiece. I freaking love this film. Like, I, I, I don't know what this else to say. It is flawless. Number one, Aquaman. I really enjoyed the heck out of Aquaman. This is how a superhero movie should be. Uh, James Wan did such an excellent job. He knew exactly what he was doing. And he just wanted to bring back the fun in these DC superhero movies. He wanted to, to he, he saw what these DC films were like. And then he said, you know what? I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be all dark and I don't want to be all serious. Let's make this fun. Let's make this a spectacle. Let's make make Aquaman a um you know like a really, really spectacular visual like feast extravaganza. And he achieved that awesomely. So <laughs> uh yeah, that was that was amazing. I mean, he directed Furious 7, which is the best. Fast and Furious film, okay, and you know, you know those films are, are are criticized a lot, but he was able to make the best one out of the entire you know saga that you know the franchise. So it was like Fast and Furious in the DC universe. Aquaman was awesome. I freaking loved it. So there you have it. That's my number one. Aquaman is the best film in my opinion in the DC worlds of DC, and there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 list. My name is Alex Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.